Hello and welcome to part six or seven, uh, the last lecture in our biotechnology series on chapter nine in genetic engineering and biotechnology. So uh, for this particular lecture, we are going to, sorry, I was on the wrong slide there. Uh, we are going to look at probes and blotting. And probes are a tool that are used to search for a gene of interest. And many times uh, probes are going to be uh, radioactively labeled so that we can x-ray to look for them or they will be fluorescently labeled so we can detect them in cells or other areas. So DNA probes are used in a couple of different ways. Um, we can use DNA probes in sequence locations similar to the Sanger sequencing we looked at. You might consider those dideoxynucleotides a type of probe. And but in DNA probes, we're usually using a whole sequence and they're used to tag um, in order to find, excuse my typo there, in order to find a specific sequence. So here on the left, I have a diagram of um, a DNA probe. Here's our DNA sample right here that we extracted from whatever organism, a bacterial cell. Uh, we heat up this DNA and denature it so it becomes single-stranded. We heat it up just enough to break the hydrogen bonds between the bases so that each strand is now separated from the other. Now that these strands are separated, my DNA bases that were in the center that were base paired together are now open and free, which means I can take a DNA, another DNA sequence that I created as a researcher, I create it as a probe and it has a sequence that will be complementary to somewhere on my actual um, strand of DNA. On that probe in the laboratory, we've added some kind of um, tag. This tag, uh, they refer to it as a molecular beacon. This tag could be a fluorescent molecule. It could be um, a uh, compound of some kind that is going to send us some kind of signal that that beacon, that that DNA probe is present. I take my probe and I add it to a solution with my denatured DNA and my probe will hydrogen bond or uh, it will base pair with the sequence that I am looking for, that it is complementary to. And I can then x-ray or look at this under a microscope and look for fluorescence and see where my probe is. This allows me to see where in a really big piece of DNA, a specific DNA sequence is located. Um, and this has a couple of different, different uses. Here in colony bl blotting in what's called a fish assay. Um, in colony blotting, I'm going to use a DNA probe to detect the presence of a bacterial cell that has a DNA sequence I'm looking for. So I start out with a, an isolation streak plate known as a master plate that has different colonies of bacteria growing on it. Okay? So we have all these different colonies. I take what's called a nitrocellulose filter. And this filter is laid down on top of this plate very gently to make, an, to make a negative of the plate. I allow it to sit on top of those bacterial colonies for a, a period of time. And then I carefully remove it. And when I do, I have copies of the colonies on my filter. I then take this filter and I treat it with sodium hydroxide. And sodium hydroxide will cause my DNA to become single-stranded. It will cause denaturing of those hydrogen bonds. And so my bases will no longer be bound together. They will be, um, I will now have single-stranded DNA. I take this filter and I expose it to a solution containing probes, in this case, that are radioactively, um, that are uh, radioactively labeled. So I have my DNA probe, which is a, strand, a short little small strand of DNA that is complementary to the single-stranded DNA from the bacteria somewhere in that DNA. That probe that I created also has a little radioactive label to it. Here you can see it binding. So here's the gene of interest that I'm looking for within the bacteria, and here is my radioactive probe that is binding to that gene. I then rinse my nitrocellulose, fil nitrocellulose filter and any probe that is unbound will be washed away. Any probe that is bound to its complementary DNA will be present. 
I then expose this nitrocellulose film to x-rays. I take an x-ray of it and on the x-ray, the darkened circles indicate colonies of bacteria that had my gene of interest, that contained my gene of interest. So I can now go back to my original plate down here. And since this is a photograph, my nitrocellulose filter is essentially just a photograph of the plate itself. I can go back to the plate and I can say, oh, okay, so this colony here and this colony here are the ones that match my photograph of where the actual gene of interest is located. None of these other colonies contain it because the probe is not showing up on the picture where, the, um, where those colonies were. So that's how a DNA probe is used in what's referred to as colony blotting. Another way the probe is used in eukaryotic cells and in viable cells, in this case in cancer, is what's called the FISH assay. FISH assay stands for fluorescent in situ hybridization. In situ just means within the cell in a cell culture. Now in this case, they created a DNA probe that was specific for what's called the HER2 gene. Now the HER2 gene is a gene that is associated with, press, with breast cancer. And uh, that gene, if mutated, that gene increases the risk of breast cancer in women. So they created a DNA probe that was specific for the mutated form of the HER2 gene. They then um, used this, uh, this probe and they isolated cells. This is from a cell culture, right? This is a cell culture. And they tagged proteins. Now in this case, they're doing this as a uh, protein tag. And they tagged the proteins that are the product of this HER2 gene. And in tagging them, they caused these, um, I believe they were looking at, MR, at RNA, excuse me. They tagged RNA. And in tagging the RNA, the messenger RNA out in the cytoplasm, you can see how many copies of that HER2 gene are actually being transcribed. That's a lot of mRNA there, which um, the HER2 gene, when it's transcribed, its gene product promotes cell proliferation. So these breast cancer cells will be signaled to divide very rapidly um, and very quickly. This further uh, puts the patient at risk for greater mutations. They were doing this in situ hybridization because they then took the, this same cell culture and they treated it with, um, with a compound called TSA. And after treatment with TSA, you can see how much less these cells glow. So there's much less RNA, which means that gene is being turned off that this drug is, this molecule or drug or whatever they're treating the cells with is capable of shutting off that HER2 gene so it does not express as much. You can see there's a big difference um, between the two. So this was a pretty big chapter, although it seems really short in the book. Um, there was certainly a lot of information within it that's really relevant and important. And so these are just some questions that you uh, want to ask yourself. I'd like to give you a short review after the lectures. So what are the different types of genetic engineering? Restriction enzymes come from, sorry for my typo. Uh, what's Sanger sequencing? How can PCR be used in the process of creating a recombinant cell line? Uh, so how can you take uh, imagine that you're in a laboratory and you are being asked to do research on, say, COVID-19 or the flu virus or a bacterial infection. Which of these tools are you going to use and how could you use some of them together? How could I take the, the idea or the tool of electrophoresis and Sanger sequencing and DNA probes and put those, those different tools together to try and discover something about um, my virus or bacteria or organism that I'm trying to research. So the idea behind biotechnology is not that there's one single tool that's going to be used, but that you're going to understand how these different tools are used and what they can tell you and then put them together and use multiple tools uh, together to learn more about a particular organism through some form of genetics.
Okay. So that's the end of our unit, of unit uh, two on, on microbial genetics. We covered uh, mechanisms in uh, microorganisms for replication, transcription, translation, uh, mutation. We covered a lot of material in this unit. Um, so I hope to see everybody in review. And if you have any questions, you can always send them to me. Let me know. Hope you have a great day and I will see you in class.